Howdy, I'm known as Dimwit, the last mountain man, feared throughout the land. And I'm back out here with my Ballard single shot rifle. I did a video on this yesterday and I ran into a, kind of an issue. You see, uh, this gun has got a, what they call a dual uh, ignition, uh, which means that uh, if you can't get the hold of cartridges for it, you could lo uh, load it with uh, loose powder, black powder, uh, and a round ball, and a percussion cap. And um, if you've seen that uh, video, uh, I didn't have a lot of faith in in that because I was afraid there's going to be a lot of escaping hot gases and, and particles and. And so I had uh, made uh, uh, this thing, this kind of a loose chamber uh, that fits in there and, uh, and is supposed to seal off those uh, hot gases and particles and things. And um, what I hadn't thought about it was that uh, the firing pin on the hammer was uh, hitting uh, the rim of this uh, shell casing before it could ignite the um, uh, percussion cap. As you can see down in there is a um, thing to put your percussion cap on down in there and so uh, it, it wouldn't fire and um, and uh, so what I did was uh, fire one shot without it just to uh, kind of prove the point that it wouldn't work very well and and it didn't I got my face peppered pretty good with uh, uh, unburnt uh, black powder particles and hot gases and, and uh, I wore goggles and I kind of closed my eyes also so it wasn't too bad but it sting pretty good on my cheek and um, when watching the video it kind of it was maybe a little bit worse than I thought it would be so um, maybe it wasn't a smart thing to do but then uh, with a name like Dimwit, I don't know. It seems to me you kind of you don't get a name like that for for no reason. And I'm sure, uh, pretty sure I earned my name. And um, but uh, I'm a curious guy. And but then again, we all know what uh, curiosity did with the cat. So. Uh, uh, just because I'm stupid doesn't mean you have to be so uh, Please try to be safe when uh, you're shooting these old guns excellent gun uh, when you shoot Cartridges Not so excellent when you treat it more like a muscle loader but I may be stupid, but I'm not a quitter so uh, what I've done is I milled uh, kind of a uh, well I milled out a part of the rim here that uh, you can see there's a little red color down in there uh, and that's to give that uh, firing pin some um, extra room so that uh, the hammer will actually reach that percussion cap and, and set it off and um, I tried it uh, with this in the gun and percussion cap and it works but I haven't loaded it with black powder and round ball yet and, and I guess that's what we're going to do now and um, um, let's have at it. We'll take a round ball like this and we'll drop it down in there 
and we'll take some black powder and um, I'm not going to fill it all the way up yet oops that was more than I planned and then we're gonna squeeze this thing in there Let's see it's going in there I gotta make sure it get that notch where it uh, belongs Okay, now I'm going to make sure there's no air space in there. So we'll dribble just a little bit more powder down through that hole in the casings, casing and, and then we'll put this powder horn away. And, And uh, now we're ready to fire, almost. We have to put a percussion cap on there. So we'll cock it. And I have a percussion cap. And we'll try <laughs> to put this on there without dropping it on the ground. I think I'm gonna have to do this kind of out of the picture because it's kind of tricky to get on there. It's uh, kind of recessed down in here pretty good. There we go. Now you can see we have a percussion cap down in there. I'll gently lower the hammer to um, push that percussion cap on there uh, so it's seated and then we'll try to be safe and I'll put my goggles on and um, and for that first shot I think I'm even gonna close my eyes just to be sure and probably just hold a gun away from my body a little more than I nor normally would, just to be safe. Well, um, I think that went well. I couldn't uh, feel any escaping gases or particles. Of course, I held it quite a ways away and uh, I closed my eyes <laughs> so, but uh, I'm looking forward to see the video and on how it turned out now um, you can't stop there put it in half cock open the gun and push this casing out Now it's nice and black. And I heard uh, people talk about these or seen things written about these. Uh, and uh, what they say is that you could use it as a muzzle loader. Now, there's no ramrod on this gun. And um, so I think uh, what you just seen me do is uh, actually how they did it. But uh, I brought a kind of a loading stick with me, so why don't we try to load it as a muzzle loader and uh, see how that works. Um, so we'll open the gun and uh, we'll put this uh, 
loose chamber that I made uh, back in the gun. Actually, I'm uh, starting to think that these gun came with something like that because uh, I just can't see how they'd work properly without something like that. And if you saw my last video, you'll understand. And okay, so um, we'll take our powder horn out and I have a adjustable powder measure. I have set this at uh, 45 grains. Just plug your powder horn. And we'll dump that down in there. Kind of make sure it levels off down there. And then I have a round ball that's um, a little smaller than the one we used before. Because as you remember, the other one fell down in there and seated on the land of the rifling. This one uh, is smaller because you have to get it down in there with a patch. Now this is pre-lubricated. So we'll... Um, And uh, not always easy to do this on camera, but I'll get it started in. But there we got it kind of started with uh, my thumb, and then we'll take our loading stick and we'll shove it down in there. And we're, we'll make sure it's down on the powder. Don't want any air voids in there. And now we're ready to, to prime it again. So we'll cock it. And uh, put a percussion cap on there. So now we're ready to shoot again, and uh, let's see. Oh, just a minute. This safety thing, it doesn't come natural to me. I might have figured that out by now. Okay. Well, there we go. It's um, it's a nice gun. It's uh, living up to my expectations. I kind of knew that it wouldn't work properly without something in here to uh, seal those gases so if you got a gun like this and want to try it as a muzzle loader you got to make something like this and uh, now that I got this gun dirty again and I have to clean it I, well I have one more of these cartridges that I made 4440 shell casing 
convert it into a rim fire and fit it with a I can't remember what they call them now <laughs> but uh, check out my other video on this Polar rifle uh, and um, I think I forgot to show you the patent uh, markings and things on it and can you see that? Okay. It uh, says Merrimack Arms Manufacturing Company, Newburyport, Massachusetts. Ballard's patent, November 5th, 1861. And then on the hammer it says patented January 5th, 1864. And, and that is uh, the dual ignition part, uh, 1864 patent. So um, let's fire it one more time and uh, we'll call it a day. <clears throat> Got a lot of uh, black powder residue here now. And that bullet is actually so long it's hitting the um, it is hitting the lands of the rifling so I'm either gonna have to um, and it worked great yesterday but now I guess we have more fouling in here um, I may have to remount uh, the chamber a little further um, or I'm gonna have to use try to use different bullet I don't really have any other bullets that I can use with I didn't bring any cleaning uh, brushes with me I think we're gonna have to call it a day watch that first video on the Ballard rifle instead and 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 you will see what I mean okay get out there and shoot these old guns but try to stay safe see you